The Venerable Bede describes in his History of the Abbots of Wearmouth and Jarrow how, early in the morning of Wednesday the 4th of May, Mass was sung in the Church of the Mother of God, the Immaculate Virgin Mary, and in the Church of the Apostle Peter, and Caofrith, and those who were present communicating with him, prepared for his departure. When all of them were assembled in St. Peter's Church, and when he had lighted the incense, and addressed the prayer at the altar, he gave his blessing to all, standing on the steps and holding the censer in his hand. They went down to the shore there, amid tears and lamentations, he gave them the kiss of peace as they knelt upon their knees, and when he had offered up a prayer, he went on board the vessel with his companions. The deacons of the church went on board with him, carrying lighted tapers and a golden crucifix. Having crossed the river, he kissed the cross, mounted his horse, and departed, leaving in both his monasteries about six hundred brethren. Among the treasures that Caelfrith took with him that day as he sailed away over the water was a vast book, which he intended to give as a gift at his destination, the Shrine of St. Peter in Rome. Today we call this book the Codex Amiatinus. Eofrith would never return, and the book he took with him would travel throughout Europe, only reaching English shores again 1300 years later, in 2018, when it was acquired for an exhibition by the British Library. Today, the Codex Amiatinus is the oldest surviving complete Latin Bible in the world, and is considered the most accurate copy of St. Jerome's original translation. It grew out of a concentration of intellectual and spiritual power in the Anglo-Saxon monastery of Wearmouth and Jarrow, now near Newcastle. The monastery was founded by Benedict Biscop in 674 on land donated by King Egfrith of Northumbria, who was looking to build a monastery as a model for the Western Latin tradition, as opposed to the Celtic tradition that was more influential in the area at the time. The monastery was so successful it was expanded and became one of the intellectual hothouses of the Middle Ages, the cradle of English art, and the place at which the Venerable Bede became the father of English history and literature. The abbot of the monastery, Caelfrith, was, according to Bede, a particularly industrious individual who worked hard to expand the already sizable library that had been founded by his predecessor, Benedict Biscop. Part of this project was the commissioning of three enormous Bibles using St. Jerome's new translation. It's not normal in this period of history for people to attempt to make a complete copy of the Bible. Normally you would expect to find individual books of the Bible to appear in separate volumes, and perhaps if the scriptorium was feeling particularly adventurous, you would find a single manuscript of the Gospels, as in the case of the Lindisfarne Gospels, or the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament. So it's difficult to overstate the scale of this project, the sheer amount of resource required for its completion. The folio size is large. Each double page is 27.5 by 20.5 inches, and when closed, it's 10 inches high. It contains copies of the Old and New Testaments, each written on 1,030 leaves of parchment, made from at least 515 animal skins. At a time when many people lived essentially at a sustenance level, the cattle were far from being mass-bred sources of meat, but were instead integral to the working of agricultural communities. The sacrifice of 1,545 of them represented a phenomenal outlay of wealth. Three Bibles were produced, one for the monastery at Jarrow, another for Wearmouth, and another for Rome. We know that it was the work of seven monks, but we don't know how long it took them to complete. If we assume that it was started shortly after Caelfrith became abbot in 688, and finished before he left for Rome in 716, then it would give us some 28 years as a working period, so somewhere in the region of 9 to 10 years per volume. The Codex Amiatinus contains three detailed painted scenes, a series of diagrams, and a choice of script that are all profoundly Mediterranean in style, probably inspired by the many manuscripts that Benedict Biscop and Caelfrith brought back from their trips to Rome to furnish the library at Jarrow. 
The intention was to demonstrate that the church in England was a richly dedicated Christian land, as integral to Christendom as any of its Mediterranean neighbours. It was intended to state the connection of the Wearmouth and Jarrow Monastery to the patriarchal seat in Rome and to the wider Orthodox Church of the Mediterranean world, as opposed to the Irish Celtic tradition. One of the first pages in the Codex is the dedication page, which proclaims that the manuscript was given from Caelfrith, abbot from the far-off land of the Angles, to the shrine of St. Peter in Rome. However, part of the dedication was later scraped down, and Caelfrith's name was replaced with that of Peter of the Lombards, an abbot of San Salvatore in Tuscany, leading scholars to believe that the manuscript was produced in 6th century Italy, rather than early 8th century England, until 1888, when an Italian scholar discovered the original inscription. It's a highly impressive work of incredible high quality, artistry and scholarship, which demonstrates the very best of our Anglo-Saxon forebear skills. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, or if you want to help support our mission, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope to see you again soon. Benedicat vos, omnipotens Deus, pater et filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen.